So in this video, we're going to talk about our lists and the different types of lists we have within Pardot. If we go under the Marketing tab, Segmentation, and Lists, so as you can see in this table, we're looking at all of our current lists that we have within Pardot. If we want to build a new list, we can go ahead and hit Add List. And I'm going to talk about the different type of lists that we can add into Pardot. The first list I'm going to talk about is a static list. And that's basically it. It's static. I also like to call them bucket lists because we can throw people in, we can throw people out, but you know, it's going to be a very manual list. It's not going to do anything on its own. So I'm going to call this uh, demo static list. And everything else I'm pretty much gonna leave the same. It's not an email test list, it's not a dynamic list. I'm not going to set an archive date. Maybe we do want this to be a public list and we want people to subscribe themselves and we want prospects to be able to subscribe themselves to this list. Let's just call this announcements. Let me make sure I spell that right. And then description, um, we can say, There we go. A collection of monthly announcements on our company. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this list. So here's our static list. I mean, there's not a lot we can do with it. Uh, we can import some prospects into there. If we look into our email preference page, people will be able to opt in to get onto this list. Um, we can run some segmentation rules later or some automation rules. Uh, maybe we might wanna add it onto a form, but that's it. It's a static list. It's not gonna do anything itself. You can push people in manually. You can take people out manually, um, but it's not going to change. If we go back to our lists and we create a new list, we can also do what's called a dynamic list. I love dynamic lists. I'm gonna go demo dynamic lists. So we have the option right here to create a dynamic list. If I go ahead and select this option, I'm gonna go and set my rules. Dynamic lists are really powerful lists. This list, based on the criteria that we set, will be constantly looking for prospects in the background. If they match that criteria, it'll go ahead and add them onto this list. At any point in the future, if that prospect no longer matches the criteria we set, it will also automatically remove them from the list. That's what makes dynamic lists really powerful. Um, in the future, we'll also talk about how we can use dynamic lists for some reporting as well. Uh, maybe we're not gonna be using it for um, email, but we're gonna use it just to be able to see how many people do we have in our list with the title of marketing director that lives in California. So for right now, let's build our first dynamic list. So we have the match type, which we'll get into here soon, and we have add a new rule or add a new rule group. It's really important on your own time that you go through and look at all the different criteria that we can use for our dynamic list. It's pretty powerful. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna look for some prospect default fields. I wanna look for anyone who might have VP in their job title. So I'm gonna jump all the way down to prospect default field and I'm gonna select, we want job title, and I'm gonna say contains VP. Again, I'm looking for anyone who has VP in their job title. So I could run this just how it is. I can hit run rules. Yes, I'm sure I want to build this dynamic list. And now Pardot's gonna go in the background and it's gonna look for people who match this. It's gonna look for people who match the list rules, which is job title contains VP. So as that's going back and looking, I'm gonna make another dynamic list, just because I wanna show you how powerful this is. Let's hit dynamic list and set rules. We can also add rule groups. So rule groups get into when we start making more complex dynamic lists, we can have a rule group to where within the group, we can have it match any or match all. So what match any and match all is, it's the and or statement. So if I go ahead and let's just say prospect CRM campaign status 
is received. And right now we can see match all. We want them to match all the criteria, so it's going to put an and. But I could also say match any to where I might be looking for multiple campaigns. So I can say campaign status. I can grab the secondary campaign is received. So I'm matching this and then maybe I might want to add another rule and I'm going to do the match all. So I want it to match either this campaign is received or this campaign is received and the prospect lives in California, for instance. So I can do prospect default field and then let's find our state and I'm going to say is and I'm going to put California I'm also going to put CA. Um, one of the things that we should note uh, is cleanliness or, of our data. One of the things I suggest is standardizing any state or country field so you're not having to build out your list like this. Basically what I'm saying is I want to make sure, because I'm not sure how clean my data is, so I want to make sure that I grab either California spelt out or the state code which is CA. In the future, I do recommend having a standard set of fields for your state and country. It really doesn't matter if it's country code, state code, country name. Really talk with your Salesforce admin to make sure that you're using the best standardization for your company needs. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and run this dynamic list. I know I'm not going to have anyone show up, but again, it just shows you how we can have the complexity within our dynamic list. There are a lot of criteria that we can choose from, so definitely take time and go through all the different criteria that you see here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Run Rules. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to jump back to my list to see how my first dynamic list is doing. So I want to jump back to see how my first dynamic list is doing. It looks like it's collected 13 prospects. That's awesome. So these are all the prospects within my system that have a title that contains VP. Let's just double check and let's jump on Tom James and let's look at his title. And it does contain VP. So job title, SVP, production. Perfect. So we know that list is working. So going back to our list, we still have a couple more options to talk about. If we go back to add list, we'll notice that we have an email test list. So what's an email test list? This is really an internal test list that you can add, let's just say your approval committee for emails that can include a lawyer, your uh, boss, your direct boss, maybe you have a copywriter that you want to add onto a test list. We create internal test lists because before we send an email out to all of our prospects, we want to send an internal email to ourselves first just to make sure what everything looks like, just to double check what that email is going to look like for our prospects. So we can make this internal test list and I'm going to call it my marketing test list because I want everyone on my marketing team to be on this test list. So I'm going to hit marketing test list and create. Perfect. So how do we add ourselves to this marketing test list? I'm not a prospect in here. What do I do? So awesome question. We're going to jump back to our admin area and we're going to go down to our users. So I'm going to say I want to be on this test list and I'm also going to put the admin and then I'm going to put Kim Smith. These are all people within my system who are on the marketing team that I want to make sure gets all of my test emails um, before I send them out to our prospects. So with three selected, I'm going to go ahead and create prospect and add them to a test list. So what this does is it takes these users, it's going to create them as a prospect within our Pardot system, and then it will also add them into our test list. So let's go ahead and create Pardot. So let's go ahead and create the prospects and then we're going to choose marketing test list and I'm going to hit go. I'm going to say OK. Perfect. So if I jump back over into my list here and I look up my marketing test list, we'll see we have our three prospects that I just added. Going back to lists, let's talk about a couple of other options that we have here. So within our list system, we talked about our email test list. We talked about our dynamic list. We haven't yet talked about the archive date. 
as you start building lists out, trust me, it's gonna get super messy. You know, we're just building and playing around right now and I already have 10 lists within here. We can set archive dates on our list. It doesn't delete them, it doesn't push them to recycle bin, but it keeps a clean view within our system. So if I go back and let's just say on my dynamic list two, let's just say I wanna make sure that I only wanna use this for reporting purposes. I may not wanna delete this list after I used it for reporting purposes, but I don't want it in my current list view. So I'm gonna jump up to edit and then basic info and I'm gonna set an archive date and I'm gonna put it as Friday, for instance. And I'm gonna go ahead and set rules, run rules, hit okay. So if I go back to our list area, we'll notice that dynamic list is no longer here. What happened to it? If we look up at our view, we're looking at all current lists. We also have archive lists, so this is great. So we can look at all our archive lists, and so here's our archive list. It doesn't delete it. We can still come back and look at it. We can make modifications, but it just takes it out of view. Again, it's really going to help the cleanliness of our system as you start using it long-term. Set archive dates if you know that you're not going to be using that list for any particular reason in the future. That way it can be pushed into the archived area, but we can always go back and grab it if need be. Going back to all current lists, a couple of things I want to talk to you about as well, and let's just go to add new list. We talked about our archive date, our public list. So really talking about our public list, these are our email preference center. So we might have a couple of lists that we want to make sure is available in the email preference center. This could be including trade shows. Maybe we want trade show announcements. And I cannot spell for the life of me. There we go. Trade show announcements. And then we want to put a, a then we want to put a description here. So that description could be, you know, sign up to get our trade show announcements. Sign up to get our trade show announcements. So this will appear on our preference page and I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here. I do have one list that's already on the preference page that I can show you, but we might wanna think about in the future, okay, what kind of list do we want our prospects to self-select to add them into? So we could have trade shows, we could have webinars. So if we wanted to put a webinar we could have our newsletters, we could have our blog posts. Um, you know, think about the different types of self-selection that of emails that your prospects may wanna receive. Another thing to note about our email preference page and our list that we want our subscribers to self-select, we can also make dynamic lists into our preference center. Uh, so one thing to be mindful of, the only people who will be able to see that dynamic list are people who are already within that dynamic list. So if I go for this dynamic list here, and maybe I don't want my, um, maybe I want my prospects to be able to get themselves off this list, even though it is a dynamic list. I can hit edit, I can go back to basic info, and I can put public list, and I can say here, and let's just say this is California announcements. Maybe all of these prospects are within California. And we can put, get updates on our company news in California. And I can go ahead and set my rules. Right now I know we have job title contains VP. Let's just go ahead and change this and put state contains California or CA. I'm gonna go ahead and hit run rules. And if we go to our email preference center, which we can find under emails and preference page, we'll see the list count. We have two different lists 
that are attached to this preference page. We have our dynamic list, which is for the California announcements, and then we just have our demo static list announcements. If we go ahead and look at our preference page, because I'm not in that California announcements list, I'm not seeing it here. The only thing that I'm seeing is the, the only thing I'm seeing is the one static list that we have available to us. Only people who are in that dynamic list will be able to see that California announcements and they'll be able to uncheck it themselves and save preferences. All right, so we went ahead and we talked about the different types of lists we have available to us within Pardot. We have our email test list, which is being used for internal purposes to see what it looks like on the other side being a prospect when we send emails. We have our dynamic list that is based off criteria that we set or predefined rules that we set to go ahead and automatically add people into that list. We also have our public list that lets people self-select what lists they're interested in. And then we have our CRM visible. The CRM visible list allows our sales team within Salesforce to go ahead and add or take off prospects within a particular list. So one of the things that I would like for y'all to do for your homework is to really play with the dynamic list option. Go ahead and set some rules in there. Uh, look at all the different options that you have with the criteria that you can set. It's a very, very powerful way to use Pardot to segment your prospects. As we get further into the, our training, uh, one of the great things with Pardot is that we can target we can target prospects based off the criteria that we're looking for so we can send them customized emails.